equations. This time, um, all of our examples will have um, variables in the denominator, which tends to trip people up a bit. So let's go over some examples. Again, when you have fractions involved in an equation, usually the easiest thing to do is to multiply everything by the least common multiple so that you can eliminate all of the denominators. So what you want to do is look at what denominators you have. In this case, both denominators are just the variable x. So our least common multiple would be x. So we're going to multiply each term by x. You make sure you multiply every single term. And notice what that does is x goes into x evenly, and I'm left with just 3 here. Minus, here I have my 4 times x, and on the right-hand side, x goes into x evenly, leaving no nothing, and I have 5. Actually, it leaves 1. <laughs> Excuse me, 5 times 1 would be 5. And this gives us a much simpler problem to solve. Um, and then we just go ahead and solve that equation. So I want to, again, isolate my x. So I subtract 3 from both sides. Okay, pi minus 3 gives me 2. And divide both sides by negative 4, and I have a solution. Now, one thing you want to be very careful of when you're solving these types of equations is that it is undefined. We can't divide by 0. So it's undefined. Um, to have the zero in the zero in the denominator of the fraction. So you do want to go back to the original problem and make sure that your answer, your solution, x equals negative one half, does not make any of the denominators equal to zero. And it doesn't. It makes the denominators negative one half, which is okay. But you do want to check that. If if your solution were to make the denominator zero, then it would not be a valid solution. And you would here we would have had no solution but we're okay, so our solution here is x equals negative one-half. All right, let's have another. All right, this one looks a little more complicated, but again, all you want to do is look and find your denominators. We have a denominator of, again, both denominators are just plain old variable x. So to solve, we're going to multiply each term by x so that we can eliminate that denominator. Okay, the first one again, x goes into x and cancels, just like we wanted it to. So we have 3 plus x here. x goes into x equals 1. So we again have just 25 plus x here. You would want to watch if that's a negative sign right there. You would want to make sure you distributed the negative to both terms, that it was a plus 25 plus x. So, And over here we have 86x. Now, don't forget to multiply this right-hand side. Okay, don't leave it out or it's going to cause problems for you. Let's go ahead and solve this equation. So, combine our like terms. We have x and an x gives us a 2x. And 3 and 25 gives us 28. Equals 86x. We want to get the x's on the same side, so I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. Again, we're just back to the basics of solving an equation. Um, 86 minus 2 gives us an 84x equals 28. And again, we have 84 times x. So to isolate the x and get it by itself, we're going to do the opposite of multiply and divide both sides by 84. And we get our solution is 28 over 84, which we would want to reduce if at all possible. And we can reduce that because 28 goes into 84 three times. So we end up with one third as our solution. Again, go back up and make sure that and that solution does not make any of your denominators zero, which it does not. It would make both of our denominators one third, which is perfectly okay. All right, yet another example. Notice this one's changed a bit. Our denominator, instead of just being x, is x minus 3. Do not try to just cancel out the minus 3. That's not legal mathematically. What we want to do instead is multiply everything by that denominator, which was that entire thing, x minus 3. So we're going to multiply each term by x minus 3. Okay, and 
like we would. Notice our denominator here is going to cancel. X minus 3 goes into X minus 3 once, and there we have it. On the left-hand side, we would have 5 times X minus 3 equals 1, because notice our denominator cancels there, leaving us just the numerator of 1, plus 2 times X minus 3. Let's go ahead and distribute to remove those parentheses. Well, on the left, we have 5x minus 15. On the right, we have equals 1 plus 2 times x is 2x, and 2 times negative 3 gives me negative 6. Let's simplify. Notice on the left, we're totally simplified. On the right-hand side, however, we have this 1 and this negative 6. Let's go ahead and put those together to get our negative 5. Gather your x's on the same side, and I know at this point you're going, oh yeah, I've done this a million times. <laughs> it's important to watch your details, though, because it's easy to make a mistake. Okay, so we have 3x minus 15 equals negative 5, and again, just continue solving like we always do. We get 3x equals 10. If we divide both sides by 3, our final solution is that x equals 10 thirds. And that's kind of an ugly answer, but that's what it is. Again, go back up. Does 10 thirds minus 3 make this denominator 0? It does not, so we're okay with our answer there. Um, our answer is x equals 10 thirds. All right, we have two more here. Um, I, again, this one takes it one more step. We have the x minus 2 in the denominator in two separate places. But again, just check for what your denominators are. They're x and x minus 2, and multiply everything by that. So we're going to multiply each term by x minus 2. Now remember, the goal here is to eliminate the denominator, so don't eliminate the denominator and multiply it through. Okay, that's an error that is sometimes made. So right there, simplified, we'd have 2 times x minus 2 for that front term. For the second term, the x minus 2 cancel, and I'm left with 3x, just like we planned. We didn't want the denominator there. That's why we multiplied by x minus 2. On the right-hand side, I'm just left with 1. Go ahead and distribute to eliminate the parentheses. On the left-hand side, so I have 2x minus 4 plus 3x is equal to 1. Combine your like term, and I get 5x minus 4 equals 1, and now solve from there. Add 4, and then divide both sides by 5, and we have our final answer. 5 divided by 5 gives us x equals 1. Again, go back up. If I put 1 into this, for x, would it make my denominator 0? It wouldn't. 1 minus 2 would be negative 1, which is okay to have for a denominator. We just can't have 0. Okay, so our solution is x equals 1. All right, here we are, final example. <laughs> As we look at our denominators, notice that we have x plus 4 and x. Now, those are two different terms. You can't just add 4 and make those the same. We have to use multiplication. So we are going to have to multiply everything by x and x plus 4 to get that, get rid of each denominator. So we're going to multiply each term by x and by x plus 4. So times x and x plus 4 here, and times x and x plus 4 on the second one. Now what happens here, notice this first one, 3 over x plus 4. The x plus 4 is canceled just like we planned, and we're left with 3 times x. With our second term, the 5 over x, the x is canceled, and we're left with 5 times x plus 4. I want to do that very carefully. On the right-hand side, 0 times anything is 0, so we just have 0 there. Let's go ahead and distribute to eliminate those parentheses. We get 3x plus 
5 times x is 5x, and 5 times 4 is 20. We combine our like terms. 3x and 5x gives us an 8x plus 20 equals 0, and we solve for x. Then subtract 20 from both sides. We get 8x equals negative 20, and finally divide both sides by 8. So we get x is equal to negative 20 over 8, which reduces, okay, because 4 goes into each, 4 goes into 25 times, and 4 goes into 8 twice. Our answer is negative 5 halves or negative 2.5.